And for more on the attack, I spoke a short time ago with Tom Keane. He's the former co-chairman of the 9-11 Commission. He's now co-chair of the Bipartisan Policy Center, and he joined me from New York. Tom Keane, very few people understand terrorist attacks like you did. You spent months looking into the attacks of 9-11 after they happened. What do you make of what happened in Canada yesterday? Well, this is a new phenomenon, really, in the last couple of years. It's the lone wolf terrorist. Uh, somebody who is radicalized over the internet and uh, comes to the point where um, basically he feels so strongly that he'll give up his own life to, in order to take somebody else's. How much of a threat is somebody like that? It, they are a threat and, uh, and they're very hard to detect ahead of time but there are methods we can use and we have to interrupt the cycle, we have to get to them ahead of time and do our very best to make sure they don't do the kind of attack that was done yesterday. So what are the signs that you're looking for ahead of time? And we know that uh, he had recently applied for a passport. We heard the Canadian police say that. His mother says that he had plans to travel to Syria. I mean, po potentially should a parent be going to the police to say, my son has talked about going to Syria and is converted to Islam? And what, what, are, what are the signs that you'd be looking for? Well, parents have done it. The parent did it in the case of the so-called uh, underpants bomber uh, on the plane. That was his father who turned him in. Well, I think, first of all, good people in the community see this kind of thing coming in an individual. Maybe they should report it so it can be interrupted. Uh, secondly, we've got to do something ourselves to disrupt it. it doesn't, people don't suddenly get radicalized overnight and want to kill themselves. It's, uh, it takes three or four years, and during that three or four years, we have a time in their community and the state as a whole to try and interrupt the cycle, try to convince them what the, the road they're, wrong, uh, they're on is the wrong road, and try to bring them back. And of course, it's not just Canada, and we've, you know, we see this pattern repeated time and time again, particularly in Europe. We've seen it here in the United States as well. What, what specifically do you mean when you say interrupt the cycle? What, what, are, what are the steps and who takes them? Well, in the first place, you've got to, you've got to find out, though, but, but, well, you can disrupt it a bit in the Internet. I mean, they're radicalized over the Internet. There should be other messages on the Internet, messages of that life instead of death and methods to point them in the right direction instead of the wrong direction. And then when you hear about somebody like this from other people in the community, when you hear that somebody is going down the wrong road like this, uh, we should be able, from information sometimes out of mosques, sometimes from families, sometimes from neighbors, to try and get a hold of that young man and see if we can turn him around before it gets to the point it got yesterday. It's the same thing happened at the Boston Marathon, same kind of situation. And uh, Times Square bomber was the same kind of when person. You, when you hear from Canada today, they've just implemented 24-hour security for the Prime Minister. You hear the debate that's even happening in Canada today about the, the mix of civil liberties and security. In this day and age, in this post-9-11 world, is it just unrealistic to think that you can have a prime minister who's not guarded 24 hours a day, have a parliament that has as little security as that one does? I wish I could say the security wasn't necessary, but the world we live in today with people who like, the, like this young man and other young men who have showed up around the world, uh, you've got to have security. It just, it just, it is, unfortunately, the world you and I live in today, and I'm afraid the way it's going, the world our children are going to live in. Okay. Tom Keane, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.